Hi everyone, my name is Emil Tsalapatis and today I'll be presenting our work on the Aurora Operating System, a single level store that provides persistence as a first class OS service. This is joint work with my collaborators Ryan Hancock, Tavian Barnes and my professor Alima Cizorda. So our work is motivated by the observation that persistence is a difficult property to ensure and developers do so only through a lot of code and effort. Let's take, for example, the RocksDB database, a very popular key value store. RocksDB optionally persists its contents, and that means that it has two representations of the data on the system. One is in memory and is used to service requests efficiently. The other is on disk and is used only in case the underlying system crashes. In that case, after rebooting, the system creates a new instance of RocksDB, which then reads the data back into memory and turns them back into the in-memory representation. It then resumes executing. This kind of back and forth between the in-memory and the on-disk representation is called bridging the semantic gap. And it goes both ways. RocksDB needs to say consistently send the data from memory to the disk to keep the two representations in sync because anything not on disk will be lost on a crash. This theoretically is an easy task. We just write the data to the file. However, this is misleading because the storage stack is actually very complex and has a lot of layers and interlocking parts. And the application has to write, correctly use system APIs to ensure that the data is flushed throughout the storage hierarchy all the way down to the storage hardware. This is not easy. And for example, the RocksDB spends 80,000 lines of code to do this task. This kind of code complexity leads to a larger surface in terms of possible bugs. And even if the developer is careful and the application is bug-free, there might be even misuse of system APIs that causes data loss. For example, the F-Sync call is relatively costly, and that means that applications try to cut down on its invocation for performance. Cutting down too much, however, might open up the possibility of data loss for the application in some cases. And even if the developer is careful and they are very conservative with their use of F-Sync, there might be very well be the case that F-Sync semantics on the underlying system are confusing and misleading. This was the case in 2017 with Linux. Linux's F-Sync call would sometimes mark data as flushed and clean, while it was actually still dirty and only in memory. This in turn led to some data loss bugs for even mature applications like Postgres. So we see that data persistence and application persistence in general is not an easy task, but we will also show you how we can make it easier for the developer, and how, in this case, we replaced the 80,000 lines of RocksDB with 109 lines of code, retaining the same persistence guarantees and gaining a performance benefit to boot. And the way we did this is by using single-level stores. Single-level stores solve the problem of bridging the semantic gap between the two representations of data, the volatile and the persistent one, in the operating system itself. Developers write applications for single-level stores as if the underlying system never crashes, the applications are fully in memory and do not worry about the volatility or persistence of the media where the, that are backing them. An application that is written for a single level store does not need to do any file I.O. for persistence or even at all. Underneath, the single level store constantly bridges the two representations by flashing application state to the disk. This includes not just data, as in the contents of the other space or an application, but also application metadata, including CPU state, thread state, and even open file descriptors. In case of a crash, the single level store is able to restore the application exactly as it was before the crash in memory. The restore this instance continues executing as if nothing happened oblivious to the interruption. So we see that single level stores are a powerful abstraction, but they have not been practical up until recently. This is because of the traditional performance gap between memory and persistent storage devices. This gap was large enough that it was impossible to forward state from memory to persistent storage fast enough and efficiently enough to transparently persist applications. This has, however, changed in recent times with the advent of new hardware like NVMe SSDs and NVDIMMs. These systems are orders of magnitude faster than their preceding technologies, which was hard disks. In general, modern systems have a way smaller formats gap between I.O. bandwidth and memory bandwidth in general. Modern CPUs have fast PCIe 4 lanes, and they have tons of them, to the point that some systems have more, of a, a more I.O. bandwidth than memory bandwidth. 
We have an additional advantage in the form of large address spaces. x86 machines nowadays have 5 level page tables and 56 4 bits of addressable space. This means that we can easily fit petabytes of data in a single process address space and avoid spilling our dataset to files. There are various approaches reminiscent of transparent application checkpointing. The IBM AS400 and its successor, the iSeries, provide data persistence to applications by using instrumentation to in transparently introduce API calls to IBM's custom persistence layer. On the academic side, Eros, the last single level store about 20 years ago, provides coarse grained persistence every about 30 seconds. This is because Eros was limited by the speed of hard disks that it was using at the time and could not flush memory into persistent storage fast enough. On the application checkpointing side, we have systems like Cryo, which is a checkpoint restore framework in user space for Linux. Cryo is used mainly for application migration and has high stop times in the order of hundreds of milliseconds that prevent it from being used for continuous checkpointing. Moreover, Cryo does not incorporate all necessary state into the checkpoint, instead depending on the file system underneath for file system checkpointing. In contrast, our goal is to provide self-contained application checkpoints with a very high persistence uh, granularity, about every 10 milliseconds, with less than one millisecond of stop times for pe optimal performance. This is exactly what we do with Aurora, uh, the first Unix sync level store. Aurora th transparently persists unmodified applications at a high frequency. This is by default 100 Hz in our prototype, but this is configurable depending on the demand of the application. Aurora parallelizes application execution with the flashing of the data to the disk to minimize stop times. It also do, does incremental checkpointing. That is, it only flashes application state that has been dirted between successive checkpoints to the disk. That way we cut down on I.O. usage. Aurora also incorporates file system state into the checkpoint using the custom Aurora file system. In the storage side, we use a copyright object store that dynamically incorporates incremental checkpoints into a main image for constant time restores. The copyright object store is optimized for latency in contrast with other systems like ZFS that are optimized for throughput. Each checkpoint in Aurora is composed of discrete persistent objects in the store, with each persistent object corresponding to a single resource in use by the application in memory. These resources can be private to a single process in the application, like for example, an anonymous region area, or they can be shared between processes and application for IPC, like a pipe. Aurora uses the POSIX object model to represent applications. That is, it does not view them as collections of processes, but rather of independent POSIX primitives, and checkpoints each such primitive separately. Aurora synchronizes this checkpointing process to create atomic checkpoints across all uh, resources of an application. This approach contrasts with process-centric checkpointing that use applications from user space as collections of in independent processes. This kind of checkpointing needs a deduplication pass after checkpointing all the state, and it tries to infer any sharing relationship. This process is complex and leads to a lot of code bloat. And this is why Aurora's POSIX object model allows it to have a tenth of the code that, for example, Cryo has for the same tasks and more, with more performance. Let's see an example case of sharing where Aurora is able to effortlessly capture the semantics of the application using the POSIX object model. Here we have two processes that have opened the same file. From user space, we cannot infer the exact kind of sharing relationship taking place here, and there is more than one case. One case is that the two processes have opened the file independently, and so each have a separate file pointer sharing the same underlying B node. This means that each process has its own permission and offset for the file. Another case is that the processes are actually sharing the file pointer used to access the vNode. This means that they share permissions and offsets, and for example, process A's writes changes the offset for process B's operations. These two cases have different semantics, but Aurora is able to accurately capture either of them trivially and distinguish between them using the POSIX object model. Aurora is also able to handle the edge case of an associated state. There might be state that is necessary for the application to function, but is unassociated with any of its processes at checkpoint time. This is the case, for example, with shared system file shared memory objects that might be periodically opened and closed by the application.
Process-centric checkpointing typically finds the application's resources by traversing each process separately and finding accessible resources. That means that it will not include the shared memory object and will be not be able to properly restore the application. In contrast, Aurora is able to track this unassociated state for the application and include it in the image at checkpoint time. Aurora provides a spectrum of checkpointing mechanisms to applications. Up to now, we have described a transparent checkpointing method that persists on modified applications. However, Aurora also provides an API for developers to use and integrate their application with the checkpointing mechanism. They can, for example, only include a subset of the resources of the application in the checkpoint. Aurora also provides two different checkpointing APIs for data persistence. One is the Atomic Region Checkpointing API that persists a single mapped region and asynchronously flashes it to the disk. The other is a journaling mechanism that synchronously flashes individual pages from the application. This table shows how the three different checkpointing methods complement each other in terms of performance. In order to measure this performance, we use a microbenchmark that maps a single area of memory, there is all of its pages, and then flashes them to the disk using one of the three methods. We then measure the stop time of the microbenchmark. We see that for smaller set sizes, the journaling mechanism is faster than atomic region checkpointing. This is because journaling does not have the overheads associated with creating an Aurora checkpoint. In contrast, we see that atomic region checkpointing is faster for larger set sizes. This is because atomic region checkpointing is asynchronous and can thus allow the application to execute while the IOs are in flight. We also see that atomic region checkpoints are faster than incremental checkpoints by about 100 microseconds. This is because atomic checkpoints do not have to gather any OS state. The 1 gigabyte data point is, uh, shows that incremental transparent checkpoints are faster than atomic region checkpoints, but that is because the checkpointing process is noisy in terms of performance for large set sizes. Aurora consists of 21,000 lines of code spanning the main kernel module, kernel modifications, and user space libraries. We show Aurora running with two different workloads. One is a transparently persistent memcached instance, and the other one is a RocksDB instance using the custom Aurora API. We run these workloads on a dual socket Xeon Skylake machine clocked at 2.1 GHz. The machine has 96 GB of RAM, has four Intel NVMe SSDs for persistence, and uses a 10 gigabit Intel NIC for networking. First, we test Aurora's transparent configuration. To do this, we use Memcached, which is a popular key value store typically used as a volatile cache. Against this base configuration, we test 10 more, each being persisted by Aurora with a different checkpointing period. These periods range from 10 to 100 milliseconds. To load these instances, we use the Mutilate benchmark using the Facebook workload. The numbers show that for throughput, overheads are relatively modest from Aurora for checkpointing periods of up to 20 milliseconds. For that period, the overheads are about 30%. They are much more pronounced for the 10 millisecond case, in which case they reach, we reach an 88% throughput reduction. This is because while going from 20 to 10 milliseconds might seem like a small step, we are actually doubling the checkpointing frequency from 50 to 100 hertz. This means that we are scaling the overheads associated with Aurora by a similar amount. Latency numbers tell the same story. While overheads start off relatively minor for the 100 millisecond checkpointing period, they quickly ramp up and reach an order of magnitude higher values than the base for 10 milliseconds. These results in general show that while Aurora is able to transparently persist MemcacheD, it does so at a high overhead if the uh, database is heavily loaded and if the checkpointing frequency is high enough. Next, we will show how we can use the Aurora API to remove most of these overheads. In order to test Aurora's API, we use RocksDB, which is a popular key value store. We load RocksDB using Facebook's DB Bench workload from the local machine. We test four configurations of RocksDB. One is completely volatile. The second one is transparently persisted by Aurora 100 times a second. The third one uses RocksDB's custom persistence layer, and the fourth one uses Aurora's API instead. For the Aurora Aware RocksDB instance, we have replaced the 81,000 lines of code used by RocksDB with 109 lines worth of Aurora API calls. The results are as follows. The volatile instance predictably outperforms the rest in terms of throughput. The transparently persisted instance shows the same kinds of overheads that we saw in the Memcached case, 
However, we also see that the Aurora Aware RocksDB instance outperforms the one that uses RocksDB's own persistence code. This demonstrates how Aurora's API allows developers to get fine-grained persistence with very high efficiency. Latency numbers tell a similar story. We see that Aurora Aware RocksDB outperforms in terms of latency the one that uses RocksDB's own code and avoids the overheads associated with checkpointing that are demonstrated by the transparently persisted instance. Aurora is a modern, fully Unix-compatible single-level store and enables developers to write highly efficient, finely persistent applications with minimal code. We have optimized Aurora exactly to provide this kind of performance. We have described one of the ways, the POSIX object model, in this talk, and we described the other two, the system showering mechanism and the Aurora file system in our paper. Aurora's highly efficient checkpointing mechanism finds uses in such diverse fields such as serverless computing and debugging, as we have outlined in our Hot OS talk. And while we believe that Aurora already demonstrates the viability of single-level stores for persistence, we also think that advents in memory and storage technology will make SLSs an even more compelling design. Thank you very much.